Okay. We are live. Hi, <laughs> awesome. we are. Yes. Hello, everyone in Reclaim. I am honored to welcome Anne Duffy here today. Thank you so much, Anne, for taking time out of your busy schedule to visit with us today. Oh, Laura, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I, we so, I'm so glad we met, and I'm, I'm loving what you're doing. And so it's just, it's just fun to have a little chat today. Yes, yes. And, you know, it's hard for me when whenever I talk with you and we say the word doing, I think of do life, right? Doing. Yeah, so, yeah. and that's, and that's really one of the, the main things that Anne does. But we're going to get into that in a moment. First, I want to just talk about how amazing she is. First of all, she has been a dental hygienist for 45 years. Yeah. Yeah. That is incredible. How did you know that you wanted to go into hygiene? What was what's your origin story with hygiene? Uh, really simple. I uh, was lucky enough to go to the dentist every six months when I was growing up, and I remember it being in high school. And my dentist and the hygienist came in when they were I was having a, a recare appointment. They said, "Oh, you should be a dental hygienist," and I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds good because I wanted to go to Ohio State, mm -hmm. and I'm one of five kids, and I had to have a plan." And um, I was just shy of the time when women were going into business and engineering and those kinds of things. I mean, I, everyone that I knew in, in, uh, at Ohio State from the female standpoint was teaching, nursing, occupational therapy, dental hygiene. That was it, basically. So um, and it's been a great career for me. I still practice a half a day a week. Not haven't gone back yet. I go back in September. So, okay. we're, yeah, but I I love it. I love everything about it. That's awesome. And this is um, even more, I was, we were just visiting about this and I said that she should get a medal of honor for this because in the beginning you moved a lot Yeah, and you ended up taking six state boards. Yeah. Six. <laughs> six. I know it was crazy. I, you know, and it's funny thing, Laura, I never thought not to take one every time Tom and I moved and he was with a big chemical company, we would move and, you know, get the paperwork, get the patient, get the, you know, we'd have to learn the laws of the state and uh, yeah. Six of them under my belt. Oh, I love That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you could probably give a course on how to take state boards, right? Uh, probably not. I'll leave that to Claire Jean and uh, Katrina Sanders uh, for dental hygiene. They, they, are the, they are the experts there. Uh, oh. I just think mostly why or how I got through that was just a lot of grit. And, you know, again, it was my profession. I, I never, you know, I just didn't occur to me to give that up. So, right. right. Yeah. And then you worked in a bunch of different offices mm -hmm. during that, that transitionary time. And tell me how that shaped you. I think it shaped me because of, um, you know, knowing the different um, pro procedures and protocols in the offices and just the struggles the dentist had. So as I grew, you know, uh, into my profession and then moving to North Carolina, um, I met a guy as a um, he was starting a new publication called Dental Entrepreneur Business Beyond the Classroom. And I had a love for the young dentist because most of the guys and I, I you know, honestly, I've never worked for a female dentist. Really? So, yeah, never have. I just the yes. opportunity that was, wasn't my choice. I just never, you know, never had the opportunity. But um, I have a love for the dentist. And um, so when the opportunity came to work with Dental Entrepreneur, business beyond the classroom, going to all the dental schools and the young dentist. Um, I think the passion I had behind that just has kept me in that game um, for 20 years. We've been publishing that for 20 years. Yeah. The business That's side. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I remember that coming across my desk early on in my career. And I loved that magazine because it just gave a different perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it's kind of like business 101. We try to keep it really simple. But I go back to the old magazines too, Laura, and they're timeless. I mean, you know, we we it's 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 when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So we can say it a lot of different ways, but most of what we talk about in that publication is leadership, relationships, balance. I know you're really into the balance of, of life. Um, that's so important to have a full life. And if you don't manage the business side, you really can't practice the excellent dentistry you want to practice. I think that's really important. Right. So true. And I love like, you know, just in the title beyond the classroom, because we didn't learn any of this in school. Yeah. And they're still not really learning any in school. I mean, a, a class here or there, practice management, a lunch and learn. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always 
thought that was so strange. But when you talk to the the uh, the deans, it's they don't have time. They feel like they really don't have time to to put that in. So it's it's on the young graduate to figure it out. Right. And and interestingly enough, right? I mean, it's so complicated now. I mean, COVID is just another layer. Right. But, you know, back in the day, I mean, you put your shingle out and you you know hope you had a good location. Mm -hmm. Now there's just the minutia and I, the public. I think you know that's another thing that we need to inform the public about what they go through, um, why a crown is so expensive, mm -hmm. why implants. So because of all the stuff they have to do to get ready for that. I mean, it's just the enormous insurance uh, that they have to have, the paperwork. The, I mean, you just we, we go on and on. So right, yeah. right, yeah. yes, it is really. Uh, uh, it can be something that can seem very big, but it's nice to have a publication like that where you realize you're not alone. Yeah. And there's other people trying to figure it out too. Yeah. You realize you're not alone and you realize that there is, ex there are experts out there that want to help. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just, I, my, always my messages, you know, read us and then reach out to the authors and, you know, find your mentors. And if you, res if somebody resonates with you and, all of those wonderful things that can enhance your career. Right. Yeah. So important. So, so then from the entre dental entrepreneurial was born dental entrepreneurial woman do, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit of the, the, how that came about. Well, it came about because um, in the process of doing dental entrepreneur and working two days a week in a dental office, um, I also joined a company that was direct sales with toothpaste and mouth rinse and chlorine dioxide base. So I was all over that. I mean, my God, it, it just, you know, it, it eliminated halitosis. I had a fresh breast center. Um, I was, I, I, you know, I look back on it and think, oh yeah, well, that was just seemed like the normal thing to do, right? Um, so I knew so many different women, especially in dental. So I built the biggest team. It's a leadership, you know, it's a networking company. So it was, a, I had the biggest team of female dental professionals in the company. Wow. And it was always about personal development and leadership and success. Mm -hmm. So, and then with Dental Entrepreneur, I knew um, the authors. And then I knew the speakers that were wanting to write. And then I knew the marketing uh, people, you know, because they are always also selling ads and for the magazine. So I knew so many different career paths of females in dentistry and people in dentistry. And I love men. I mean, we've got, we, we've got plenty of dudes in our, in our group too, but I, I had been hearing so much and, and it was really a course of about a year that it just, you know, really got to me that the women were the, the women that I knew weren't getting the same speaking gigs, the same money, the same um, consulting fees. They weren't getting the promotions. And one day, and I remember it was a Thursday afternoon and it's coming up. Oh, July, it's July 18th. It was four years ago. Wow, anniversary. Uh, I was talking to one of my dear friends. I'd been working with her for 20 years in uh, a marketing um, segment of a big company. And she just had her review and she was just berated and belittled. And they said her smile wasn't sincere. I'm like, what the heck? You're the most sincere person I know. She has a heart of gold. She's sharp as a, you know, really does a great job. I just literally hung the phone up and said, that's it. I'm starting a magazine to highlight women in dentistry. Oh. I mean, literally just hung it up and, you know, didn't give much thought to it. But I was at the attorneys that Monday. That was a Thursday. Attorneys on Monday morning, you know, and set the whole thing up. And it was about highlighting women so that people would know how great the women in dentistry are and that we deserve the same promotions, same, same opportunities. This was before Me Too movement, right? Yeah. And as this as as we started to develop our mission, excuse me, our mission with do. Um, and by the way, I called it Dental Entrepreneur Woman strictly because I wanted a sister publication to Dental Entrepreneur. I mean, I came up with that on the back porch with my husband. We were having a cocktail and I'm like, I think I'll just call it do. And to your point earlier, so much fun because we just do it right. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. We do it together. And it's just it's just been a great word to use when you're when you're starting a movement um but you know it was just highlight women yeah that's great but let's inspire them right mm -hmm. let's empower them and then also show them why they want to be empowered and how they can be empowered because i think that's a missing for a lot of women yeah we want to do it but you know can we 
Right. And then um, the most important thing to me now is just connecting all of you in dentistry, all the women in different career paths so that we appreciate each other and that together we can raise all women in dentistry. And that's just the goal I have. It's, it's a small goal, but it's important. It's, important. I, it, it's better than a small goal. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's a beautiful goal. I absolutely love it. And I think that now, especially with everything that dentistry is going through, especially for hygienists. We were just visiting about how hygienists are really having a hard time with COVID. I mean, this is yeah. a tough time for them. And to have a movement where you highlight what women are doing, inspire and connect, because sometimes you just need to talk to somebody, you know, yeah. or you just need to, to see someone that's two steps ahead of you and know that you can do it too, right? Yes, that's that's exactly right. I mean, we I, I like to say call a do, you know, you have those days and it's like, you know, and that's why it was kind of cool when you when you connect somebody. I remember connecting you with Karen. Right. And so, like, yes. you know, you're having a bad day. You say, oh, well, I'll call Karen. up. And I never feel I always feel better when I get off the phone with a do mm -hmm. because do's have some principles that are like we were talking earlier. Right. I mean, um, in the dental profession, and I've, I've said this before. You can't, you have to be smart to get through the curriculum. You mm -hmm. have to be a go getter because, mm -hmm. you know, in dental hygiene and assisting, I mean, they, they, they can't, the doctors can't work without the assistants. We can't work nope. without the sterilization. We, the front desk, there's so many important pieces and it's 95% women. Mm -hmm. So why are we not running everything? <laughs> I mean, when you think about it. Um, you look at the boardrooms and there's uh, very, very few companies that have a woman on the board at mm -hmm. around the table or any, you know, or any women or, or more than one. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not like we want to replace the men. Yeah, they're great. But let's sit there with you and, and see if we can make some changes, make some decisions, you know, that are ergonomically. I mean, that's just one lane. Think about ergonomics, you know. Um, right. the, the women are, are, are different than men. We sit differently. Yep. Our think our hands are different. There's, you know, all of these little things. That's just one little segment. Right. That, um, hope to make a difference. Right. Um, by getting more, more women empowered and in positions to make these decisions for all of us. Yes. I love that. That's so I, I yeah, there's so many different issues. You're right. That are different for women in mm -hmm. the profession. And we should be in those roles where we are helping shape what's going on because of all the women in the profession. Right. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. And, and, you know, and, and that's why I love sharing the stories about um, females in dentistry, you know, uh, it's funny. I had it. My good when I first started, my girlfriend was thought I was going to to your balance, you know, issue, uh, and your your the love that you have for balance. We all love balance, but she thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown because I was a one man, a one woman show with on a mission, right? So she was helping me, and she thought some of the stories were boring. And I'm like, these aren't boring at all to me. I love hearing how somebody got from from you know A to Z in our field. And because that inspires other women that are sitting there and, you know, we were talking about, you know, uh, where's the, is there a glass ceiling? Well, there are some, but what's the other opportunities outside of the, outside of the operatory um, along in the operatory, again, I'm still practicing. I still love the profession that right. can actually use all your gifts and all your strengths and not mm -hmm. keep you in a small confined space. So how did, how did, I loved hearing your story, Laura. How did you do it? How, mm -hmm. how did you get where you are today and the love that you have for what you're doing with your mission and your vision for the right. rest of your life and how you can contribute to, to all of us, uh, yep. the world, right? Yep. Well, and it's like, like we were just talking about before, I, I've never met a hygienist or, or an assistant that wasn't a go-getter. I mean, serious high achievers. High yeah. achievers. Office and managers too. I mean, yeah. right? Yes. Take such pride and have such passion in what they do. And yet at some point they reach this and, it, you know, it, it's just sort of the end of the road. And yet they want to do more. They have this desire. And to have a group of women, entrepreneurial women, to join and say, oh, I could do that. Or, ooh, that, I have an idea. Let me talk to a do, right? Exactly. It's a beautiful thing. 
And you know, a lot of women say, well, I'm not an entrepreneur, and so I don't know if I'm a do. And what I want to say is that the only reason I called it, again, Dental Entrepreneur Woman is because I wanted the sister publication. And all women are entrepreneurial because we all spin so many plates. So, sure. you know, it's it's it, it, it just how do you make your career better? And I think in leadership for so many females graduating in dentistry, in fact, 62%. Um, of Tufts graduating class this year are female. And and so across the board, it's 52%. Mm -hmm. So when they get into those positions as a dentist, as a female dentist, how do you give your team, which are going to be 97% female, how do you give them the opportunity to grow? Mm -hmm. And I really think that, you know, I've had the, I was so happy that I joined the company that I joined because I wouldn't have even known that I could have, written a vision and had it and seen it to fruition and then write another one and write another one. And it didn't even occur to me. Um, I was just, you know, I was just, you know, playing tennis and eating lunch when we moved here and then, you know, got into the profession. And then somebody lit that fire under me that there's way more to me than um, what there is walking from one side of the operatory to the other. It's almost like you're in, in, in the zoo and you're walking back and forth with you. You know, you hear that so much from from the, the the females working in the offices. And then also, I want them to understand what's on the shoulders of the dentist. Mm -hmm. And do has really opened my eyes, Laura. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit more Aaron Brockovich, blah, 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 you know, like, oh, you know, we should all get raises and we should all blah, you know, they're just keeping all the money to themselves. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's not true. That's not true for the majority. But you, we have to, we have to spread that message and spread that word that, you know, you, you female dentists are amazing because you're not only running a business and, and, and responsible for every team member's financial gain or whatever. You're also making sure the kids are getting picked up from soccer and what they're having for dinner. And, and I mean, you know, you could name 10 things that, that you're doing that you were doing when you were running right. a full-blown business as a, right. as a dental practice, which is not easy to do when you're just, it's not easy to do when you only have one thing to do, which is right. usually what the men have one laser focused, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and I think that it's so wonderful what you said too about um, giving your team opportunities to grow, because that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned was that team members that had growth mindset, we're the best team members. Yeah. And yet, if you don't give them those opportunities, those those team members with that growth mindset start to get pretty unhappy. They don't yeah. feel fulfilled. And um, yes, as a female practice owner, tons of responsibilities. But gal, when you have a team that's working together, yeah. it really makes a difference, a huge difference. So, yeah. And you know, it's it, it seems to me, I know it sounds so simple. It's not that easy, but it is pretty simple. You have to care about people. You have to not have scarcity mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think sometimes they don't want the team to grow because they're going to be afraid they're going to lose this great assistant. Well, if you're a great clinician and you, uh, and you promote growth, you're going to find another great person to fill that spot. And, you know, it's just about being generous. Um, yes. with your heart, not so much with your pocketbook, because, you know, they say when they do the surveys, they say basically everyone just wants a little bit more appreciation. Appreciate. We, we just talked about that with Tammy yesterday. I don't know if you caught that, but Tammy yeah. was on and she, we were just talking about those little pieces of appreciation go so far. Yes. And yeah. that's true in life too, really. I mean, why not carry that into the operatory, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's 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 as a leader in your practice, there's so much that you can do to like look back on your life and think you really accomplished something really valuable. I mean, on your you know, when they read your obituary, I mean, I supported people. I, I helped them grow. I mean, you have that opportunity as, as a dentist to do so many things, not only change smiles, but just people. Right. Um, you know. Right. So you, and at the end of the day, that's what matters the most, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I Oh, yes. I think. And that's why I love Dental Entrepreneur, because I try to get them early. Right. Like, let's let's get let's get some of this information to you a little bit sooner than later. Right. Um, not that they're going to take it all. But, 
you know, you don't want to look back. The saddest thing is when people look back on their careers. And I know a lot of, I do know a lot of hygienists and I, I because I'm a hygienist, I do get messages from them that are just so sad that their careers are ending through COVID mm -hmm. um, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. um, they don't feel appreciated and they're just sad. Like what, I just did this for 45 years mm -hmm. and, and did it really matter, right? I mean, and, and I think that comes from leadership, you know, to make sure that you let people know that they do matter. Right. Um, it's a strong place to be from. It's a strong place to be from, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 and something that's a little easier to carry than, you know, the monthly payments. I mean, honestly, it's just, if you, if you try, if you grow yourself, I think you have to, you know, it's true. You can't help other people grow if you're not growing. So that's where you come in coaches. Right. I right. hear this so often um, all the time that what changed their lives and, and what they're, when they had, what was the catalyst? And it's usually hiring a coach, mm -hmm. um, which I love because we have a lot of coaches uh, in our do community. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that that is just one of the, it's just an opportunity and similar to do community where you have a conversation with someone where they are really tuned into you. And um, I think that that's a beautiful thing. And sometimes just having that person that's outside of your friend group, outside of your family group, that can really kind of just take a non-biased look into where you are and what's going on, right? Yes, that's yes. So, so wonderful. And, you know, Do offers that opportunity. You, I want to get to more about what Do is about. So tell us a little bit about... If, if a person were to come, become a do, join do, what is, what's it all involved? I mean, I know, but I'd love you to tell us. Okay, well, I'd love to share. I mean, it's really simple. You just go to do, uh, w, oh, it's on the bottom, uh, dew.life, no.com, just dot life. That's our website. And you just click on join the movement. And we have a little bit of a fee to, just to pay for all the enormous stuff that we have to put this thing together. Uh, we and it's so little. It's, it's it, yeah, so little. Yeah, thank you. We, we yeah. try to make it so affordable. It's and so honestly, affordable. I, I, I've said this before. We need to put something. If anybody really wants to join and they don't have the income, especially now, I mean, just let me know. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to get a scholarship for you and yeah. or give, gift you a scholarship because I really want it for everybody. I, I don't, you know, I'm very inclusive. Everybody's welcome. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you join and then you can, we have a, a private Facebook page, which is fabulous. And everybody gets in and you can post whatever you want in there. And it's a just, it's just a wonderful, yummy group of, of females uh, in dentistry that are trying to help each other. Mm -hmm. And we, we share sources and things like that. And we publish um, every, you know, we have new blogs every, every week, we have new blogs on stories and, and great in, inside tips from influencers in the industry, influence in the influence in the dental arena. So they all have been around. They know a lot. They love to write. They love to share. Um, and everybody's got that in them. Everybody's got a story. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we publish a, a magazine uh, four times a year. And I wanted it to be, I wanted that to be yummy and something that you could take in the bathtub or on the beach or whatever. So we print some, but it goes out digitally. And um, we're having a retreat um, coming up. And that was so in, uh, that was incredible because we we were, we were laughing when we first started it, Laura, that uh, we thought, oh, we'll get 12 people to come to this retreat. And that was our first one was last November. We're going to have another one in November. So please, you know, check that out. Um, it's going to be half. It'll be somewhat live and and virtual. We're going to have two components there. Um, I just found out yesterday we have a cutoff, so we can only do 200 total. So we can have 100 live in the uh, hotel with social distancing and then only 100 on virtual just because we want to make sure that everybody can collaborate in the Zoom rooms and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, the theme of the retreat is living your strengths. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different um, personality uh, tests out there, but Strength Finders, when I took it and took the the eight week course with it, it changed my life. I mean, really? and I've taken so many things. I, you know, I've, I I love all that kind of stuff. But this truly changed my life, changed my family's life. And I just remember that was my 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 really initial goal for, for gathering 
women together in, in one room was just to share that. So we have Gallup, two Gallup coaches that um, are on our uh, retreat board and they, they are teaching all about that, going diving deep into strengths. And then we've got a three day, you know, it's gonna be a three day retreat on leadership, um, courage, confidence, business. Um, I've got a wonderful keynote on Saturday morning that is, um, we're having a call on Thursday. I'm really excited. No one will know her. She's out of the uh, dental arena. Um, awesome. but, you know, just talking about business because the other thing is I see we morphing into, you know, women in business in dentistry. It's really important for them to have a sound business and be able to sell their business someday because there's not a man out there that's building his business. And again, I'm not mashing men. That's a good example but they are building their business and they're going to sell their business. They're just not going to give it away. Right. Um, this is serious stuff for all of us because it, you know, it's about getting, a, you know, mentoring the next generation to take over what we started. Right. And it's about our legacy. So what's it worth? What's it all right. worth? And, and together we can, we can, well, together we can do anything. That's, That's all right. Doing. That's right. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. And just like what, so many women need right now, especially. Um, and what a wonderful thing to do together, like you said. And I love the fact that you are doing both virtual and in person. I think that's wonderful because that really opens the door for, for people. Yes, yes. And, and seriously virtual though, too. You know, this is gonna be funny. I did a three-day virtual on the virtual event. And I literally sat in front of my computer for three days. Um, but I felt engaged. I really did feel engaged. So we're hoping we're going to have some parameters. We want people to take it seriously because what they're going to learn and the relationships that they're going to gain from being in, in this group. And again, everybody's welcome. We are not exclusive. Y'all are welcome. Is you know, you, you got to make sure that we, you know, live by the principles, which are really simple, mm -hmm. um, just good things to, to live by. And, and I tell people, I, I made the principles up. But if you want to add some to it, go right ahead. I'm all open to that too. So I'm not I'm not like some like amazing you know person that can write and write a doc. But um, anyway, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. So, so that, fun. that is fun. It's a, so November twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So go 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 to the retreat. Do a little Christmas shopping. Yeah. And right. It's exactly. And and have a little fun because it's going to be it's a great little hotel that is in the middle of a lot of stuff so that they can do that. And, and I think we can social distance. Who knows? I mean, you know, one day I think, oh, it's great. And the next day I'm like, oh, dang, you know, they're, they're canceling people so much. But it's all it's up to God. I mean, honestly, I have a deep faith. And whoever shows up in that room is supposed to be there. Whoever signs up for, for us is, is supposed to be there. And, you know, really, it's about love and uh, acceptance and you know my little my little um you know thing that that um that I want to share you know at this mm -hmm. point when you get to be when you get to have this long career it's like okay you know I don't really have anything to lose at this point uh I just have stuff I just have more to give I think more to give so, yeah. isn't that something yeah you are a, an incredible giver and I'd love to uh we were talking about balance and I said you have such a strong faith Mm. And that, that's probably something, tell us a little bit about how that brings balance to your life. What? Well, it, you know, I mean, I, I actually, I grew up a devout Catholic and married my husband who is a devout Catholic. And, and I, I am one of those Catholics that, you know, I'm not, I don't believe in everything of the Catholic church, but, um, and I hope, you know, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for that. But it's been my it, it's been my core. So mm -hmm. like I, you know, how I start my day with balance is I get up, I'll have a little coffee. I, we, I go to daily mass. I love to go to daily mass. And it's a half an hour. Um, we're doing it social distancing at the church or you can watch it online. But Tom and I go together and then I do a little exercise, too, you know, when I get home. But to me, I think that just sets my that's my mindset in the morning. So it's it's similar to I know so many meditation. Um, reading, reading uh, spiritual or just uh, mindset, um, you know, um, tracks will mm -hmm. will set your your mind to have a good outlet outlet mm -hmm. uh, or outlook, I should say, 
Um, and so that just keeps me going. I mean, if I didn't have that to, to draw from, um, I, I do believe in miracles. I've had a, quite a few in my life. And I think if you look around, everybody has had mm -hmm. miracles. And yes. um, I, I just, I love my faith. I, I do love my faith. I, I like sharing it. And, um, and we have a Faith-Filled Friday every yeah. Friday at three o'clock. So sometimes someone will join me, you know, sometimes they won't. I'm gonna to try to get more organized like you, Lori. I just told you this the other day, you're so organized, it's wonderful. Um, but I, we, you know, we had um, Dr. Laura Mock on and she's agnostic. And I mean, I love learning about different faiths and how people bring faith into their lives because mm -hmm. whether you're, it's, it's a Christian faith or a Muslim or a Hindu or whatever, or you have no faith and, and no no belief in, in a higher power or you don't know, you still have faith in mm -hmm. yourself and how do you do it? I'm always interested in that because I think we can learn from each other. So yeah. no judgment on that, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not afraid to let people know, you know, what I do. I think, yeah, you know, no one's asked me that before, but thank you. Yeah, like you're welcome. It. Yeah, I think that that's, um, I, I love that you're so open about it because you just never know when you affect somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and by by being open about something that's so deeply important to you uh, is being true to yourself. You are living your authentic self. And so um, that inspires maybe others that um, haven't gotten to that point in their life or um, maybe are curious. And so I think that that's just wonderful. And yeah. I think it's one of the best things that keeps us going. It's believing in something bigger than us. Yeah. And, um, so I don't know how I, people do it without it. Honestly, I, I really don't. I, that, that, that's, it's always a curious thing for, for me, but, um, you know, and it's really, I don't even know. I, like I said, it's not about religion. It's just about mm -hmm. what floats your boat. I think, I mean, and then it's all about love. I mean, yeah. all stems from love and acceptance. Yes. So. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, we should probably wrap it up here, but I just want to touch again on please find Anne. You can find her at do.life and you can find her online. If you are on Facebook, she is on Facebook. She is super good at getting back to you, connecting, loving you, and making sure that you are able to do whatever you want to do. So, Oh, yes. I love that. Just do it, everybody. And and I'll just say this one quick thing, Laura. If you've reached out to me and your email got slipped by me, don't think anything. I would never want that to happen. Okay. So reach out again. And um, mm -hmm. so many gals have said, I want to write. And then they think, well, I'm not a writer. I'm like, I, you know, that's when I say, get a margarita, get a hot cup of tea, get a pen, and then let it, and say a prayer, okay, yep. and then let it flow. Yes, yes. So she's, yes, that's a really great point. We all have stories in us. We all have value to give. And so why not put it pen to paper and put it into the, one of the publications? You never know who you'll reach. You never know who that's you'll right. inspire. You know, you never know who you may help. And so um, Anne would love to hear your story and be open to uh, putting you in one of her publications. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yes, you for having me so much. I just, I'm just, so glad we so know each welcome. other. I know. And congratulations on a phenomenal career that is just getting started, really. I mean, 45 years in hygiene and still making a difference in the dental world and just the world in general. So congratulations to you. Thank You're you. an amazing person. Thank you, Laura. So are you. Appreciate Aww. it so much. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. And everyone, I will put all of Anne's contacts in the comments below so that it's easy, clickable. You can find it right away there. All right. Thanks so much, Anne. Thank you. You bet. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>